All right. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, usual cause of recession. So we're going to use our aggregate demand and supply model to model this thing. Okay. So uh, let's. Uh, we're going to have a couple of assumptions. So let's go ahead and write our assumptions, and then we're going to then we'll draw it. So our first assumption, our, our assumptions we have number one is we're going to start in the long run equilibrium. Okay, so uh, it doesn't exactly matter that we start in the long run equilibrium, but uh, we're at least saying we're going to start from decent economic times where we are fairly close to our potential GDP. Okay, we're going to start from this type of a situation. And the second assumption we're going to make is we're going to assume that the government takes no policy action. Okay, so in the real world, um, at least since the Great Depression, um, governments take strong policy action most of the time when there's a recession. And so this will change what we'd actually observe. Um, but for right now, we're going to assume that they don't take this action. And then later on in this course, we'll come back and talk about what actions they can take and how those actions will work. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this. So we just just go ahead and draw a um, a long run equilibrium. Okay, get demand on there. Great. Okay, we're set. I'm going to layer them all with ones because they're going to be shifting later on. Okay. So then we got our assumptions out of the way. Let's make a let's put these in a box so that they don't get confused with anything else we do. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So now. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at this in steps. Um, actually, I'm gonna change these to A and B so that we can number the rest of this. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that's gonna happen is generally um, it seems like most recessions, at least uh, over the period analyzed, um, are caused by falling aggregate demand. So we get aggregate demand falls due to something. So uh, we could say, uh, for example, this could be. Uh, a fall in consumer confidence, also a decline uh, in the business outlook. So consumers get worried about the future and they start to uh, spend a little bit less and save a little bit more. Also the firms get worried about the future and they don't want to do big investment projects. It could be other things. Um, some other things it could be, I'm not going to write them down necessarily, um, but you can go back and think about the things that shift aggregate demand. But some other things it could be, uh, it could be like a major financial crisis where there's where the, the lending market uh, gets totally slowed down and, and there's not many loans happening, right, which will slow down the parts of the economy that depend on lending, like durable goods and housing. Um, for Especially for a small exporting country, um, it could be something like a big slowdown in your major buyers of your export. So you're a major exporter to the EU. The EU goes in recession and suddenly you don't have market for your goods and it might push you into recession too. Okay. So we, we can think of a variety of things. That's why it's important to go back and review the shifts in aggregate demand. So let's go ahead and draw this. So the, the, the next step, so we can label our first equilibrium A. So the next step is then, well, our aggregate demand falls. Right, aggregate demand falls. And so this, uh, then when aggregate demand falls, the next thing that happens, and we can kind of add this here, is our firms are going to cut back on production. So this is going along the sort run aggregate supply curve. So the firms cut back on production due to the falling aggregate demand. Okay, due to falling AD. So there's less aggregate demand for their, for their product. Now, what so they cut back on their production now remember this is related to the slope of the short and average supply curve so they could if they had cut the prices more if they had just cut their prices so when the when the aggregate demand falls all the firms coordinated they all cut all their prices then the then the consumers will still buy still buy the investor will still build the buildings government will still spend the money the exports will still go abroad so if everyone just cut their prices in unison we would have no theoretically we shouldn't have any problem so why didn't they do that? Well, uh, the, the idea is, well, because their costs, especially their wage costs, are sticky. So, and it also might be hard to coordinate that price cut, right? It might be hard to coordinate where everyone cuts price at the same time. If they had, we would just kind of go straight from A down to C, right? If we could all just cut our prices at the same time, we'd go from A to C. That's not what happened. Instead, we end up going from A to B, right? So this is we go to B. And the idea again is, well, they, they could, they could have, if they had cut prices, 
let's say. So the idea is if they cut prices drastically, let's say down to C, the costs don't go down. Okay, so then our costs are sticky, and so we end up with a fall in profits. So they don't want to do that. Instead, they just cut back on production, which is what we've shown here. Okay, so the final part is, well, what happens next? So B is a short-run equilibrium, so now we're in recession. So we're at B, we're in recession, and um, there's actually one more thing we should maybe say about this. We can say, well, this is our potential GDP, this is our actual GDP at B. This part is called the output gap. And so the output gap shows us how far below our potential GDP are we. And this gives us an indication of how big the unemployment rate is. So when we're here, uh, we have um, at, at B, we have a lower price level. We have a lower production and we have a higher unemployment. Okay, we had all these things going on at B. It's not very big, so go ahead. Okay, um, so now we're, we're all here. So we're in a bad situation at B. We could have avoided this situation if everyone just cut their prices and wages and everything else uh, straight away. We would have just gone straight from A to C. We would have seen uh, deflation, but we would have stayed in equilibrium and people wouldn't have had to lose their jobs, right? It's this kind of that thing we talked about in the, in the textbook about this kind of magical la land of money where everybody can just do it all at the same time. But, th but this doesn't happen. So would we, the question, the first question is, would we stay at B uh, forever? So economists don't think so. So um, most economists think that if we, there will be recovery if the economy is left alone. Okay, so if the economy is left alone, that there will be recovery. So that will be um, like eventually the wages, so there's unemployment, there's a lot of unused resources, so that eventually the wages, uh, rents, and other costs will fall. And then they'll also lower the price level, so we, we'll get, um, they will get from, we'll see a increase in the short and supply as these costs are falling, okay? Increase to C, okay? So eventually we'd expect something like this to happen. So we eventually expect it to do this. And I made a mistake, this one should have been two earlier, okay? So eventually this, we would expect this to happen. Um, and this happens again because wages, rents, and other costs fall. So as these costs fall, then at the same, at the same uh, price, the firms can get a better chance for profit, so they increase their production back again. Now, uh, the question about this is, so we, there's kind of agreement, uh, a lot, most economists agree that this will happen eventually. Um, it seems like it should. But the question is how long? How long is this gonna take, right? That's the, that's the big question. So this movement from B to C, uh, how long will it take? So there's kind of a divide there. Um, there's, so that's the last thing we talked about. It was a lot, there's kind of a divide there. The Keynesians um, think uh, B to C, is slow, okay? Maybe very slow in, in some cases. And the people who are more like classical uh, economists think it's B to C is fast, okay? Fairly fast. So this is gonna come in late, important later in the course. So but they both kind of think this economy will adjust, um, but the one side thinks, well, this is gonna be really slow and therefore we should do something about it. Right, therefore we should do something about it to try to make it happen faster. And the other side is, well, this is fairly fast and, and doing doing something about it has its cost too. So so we, we probably should just let the economy uh, alone and let it adjust on its own, okay? So um, just to, uh, so hopefully that's clear. Uh, let me go over one thing more on the graph. Let me just kind of go back through this one more time. Um, so but going back to our graph, we just have, so we started at A, we saw aggregate demand fall. Aggregate demand fall, fell because of um, so one of the factors that causes aggregate demand to fall. So like we, we said consumer confidence and business outlook. And the firms cut back on their production because they, they couldn't cut back their prices too far because they couldn't um, cut the wages because they're sticky. And they might have some other costs like rent, which maybe is on a long-term contract, which are also sticky. So they couldn't cut them back very quickly. So instead we end up at uh, B. Um, they cut back their production because their profits are falling. 
But then when we're at B, we have lots of lots of vacant factories, vacant buildings. We have uh, quite a bit of unemployment. We have this output gap, which tells us how big that is. And then so uh, eventually there starts to be pressure on these wages and these rents to fall. And as they fall and they fall and they fall, we start to move this way and we eventually get back to equilibrium. And we start to get back to equilibrium at a lower price. Okay, So this is the idea. And the big question is, how long does it take to get from B to C? If this is fairly fast, maybe we should just leave this situation alone. If this takes a long time, then probably the government should should go ahead and do something. Uh, so we'll come back to those topics in a, in a future week. Um, the only thing, last thing I would say is, in the real world, the government doesn't let this happen. It takes action, and this so that's why we don't see this deflation. We don't see these price levels going down in the real world very much, at least not since the Great Depression. We barely see it, um, but you can kind of see the idea because we do see a a slowdown in inflation. We see a decrease in the inflation rate usually during recessions. So hopefully this one is clear. Um, we'll, in the next video, we're going to take a look at inflationary pressure.